Film simulations are a huge reason people want to pick up a Fujifilm camera. Being able to shoot digital and achieve that film look with almost zero effort is a lot of fun. After almost a year of owning my Fujifilm X100V, I have dialed in a few go-to settings to create my own JPEG style. This is my perfect Fujifilm film simulation recipe. I've created a few different videos over the months sharing different JPEG looks. I initially had a lot of fun changing my settings and swapping different simulations around. Part of the reason I kept picking my X100V up was with the intentions of trying out different JPEG only looks. But then over time, changing some recipes, tweaking some different settings, I've landed on a style that I'm pretty satisfied with and has been my everyday film simulation for everything. If you're new to JPEG only, film simulations, Fujifilm recipes, if this thing that I'm talking about is new to you, then you need to check out Fuji Weekly. This is where I discovered the world of Fujifilm JPEGs and it is an absolute gem. If you don't like my custom film simulation, which I'm gonna share in this video, definitely check out what's on Fuji Weekly. I can guarantee there will be a film simulation on there that will satisfy your hunger for a film aesthetic. There's a chance that this recipe and these custom settings already exist as something official online. What I've created here isn't anything super unique and perhaps this already exists on Fuji Weekly. But without any more rambling, let's dive into the details. The film simulation I've landed on using is Astia. Just like its description, the colours and contrast are softer. However, there is something I've set up which I will explain later on in this video. If you did want that harsh light and shadow contrast, you can do that at the same time as having a softer colour. Using the simulation Astia is also what I credit to giving a more pastel look to some of the primary colours. I like JPEGs to have grain, but I don't want the grain in the image to be too distracting. We want to achieve that film look, but I also want my image to stand alone as a good image, whether or not there's grain added. So for that reason, we're gonna have the grain effect as small and weak. I'll be honest, Color Chrome and Color Chrome FX Blue don't make too much of an impact. They're both selected as weak, but feel free to switch this up to whatever you think looks best. Now I wanna talk about the white balance, which I personally think has the biggest effect on how your JPEGs will look. My Kelvin rating is set to 6200 with a red tint of plus two and a blue tint of minus four. Just touching on the 6200 Kelvin here, that is quite warm, but I feel like that warmer temperature makes your photos feel a little bit more nostalgic as well, adding to that film look that we're going for. I do have to admit that sometimes this is too warm, especially if you're shooting inside. So I have my custom ring set up on the X100V to change to auto white balance if the situation needs. But most of the time, if we're shooting outside, then 6200 is the one, and I'm a big fan of how warm the photos look. Using plus two on red and minus four in blue is also important for this final look. I can't tell you exactly why, but many of the recipes that I've tried over time have a very similar sort of white balance and tint, and I like how this looks. So just from different recipes I've tried, this is what I've ended up with, and I think it looks nice. I use a dynamic range of 400, and like many of the settings here, you could just switch this up to automatic dynamic range if you think it looks best. However, using dynamic range of 400 means that your minimum ISO will be 640. I did have some comments in a recent video about why my ISO was so high, given that I was shooting at sunrise and the light was quite nice. My shutter speed was like 3,000th of a second, which is very quick. 
obviously because my ISO was high. So people were confused at that instead of just using a ISO of 100, 200, for example. I don't know the science or the correct technical knowledge behind dynamic range, but by lifting the ISO up, you get more details in the shadows without ruining the highlights. With a higher dynamic range, it's harder to clip and ruin the whites and the highlights in your image. You're essentially getting a more balanced image, but that does mean that sometimes your images might look a little bit flat and lacking contrast. I'll talk about a metering mode and a focus mode I use in a moment that helps combat me having a flat image because I want my highlights to be protected and I want the shadows to have detail, but I don't want it to be flat and boring. I do like contrast. And just a quick one for everyone that seems to be scared about putting their ISO up. You can have an ISO of up to 6400 on most modern cameras and the image quality will be fine. I would rather have better dynamic range and a higher minimum ISO than being worried about my ISO should always be at 100, 200 to get the best quality image. That's just not the case anymore. I could shoot most of my JPEGs at ISO 800 and the image quality would be fine. And my last point here on dynamic range, you could lower it to dynamic range of 200 or just put it on automatic. I don't think there's too much difference. And if you want more contrast in your image, then lower your dynamic range, that's fine. But we want that film aesthetic and film is notorious for having good dynamic range. The way the whites and highlights in general fall off on film is really nice. And I kind of want to get that aesthetic in my digital JPEGs as well. Because our dynamic range is at 400, maybe the scene is a little bit more flat and we want to bring back some color. So that's when I jump into the color menu and add plus four. I like color in my scenes, generally speaking, anyway. It's one of the reasons I'm drawn to a certain scene or I notice something in the first place. Into the tone curve now. From the many different recipes I've tried, this is what I've ended up with that I think looks good. So minus one in the highlights and minus two in the shadows. That essentially lifts the shadows and drops the highlights. Again, protecting the highlights so we get that film aesthetic. We want our highlights to look good, but also bringing back some detail and life in the shadows. Sharpness, I leave at zero. Noise reduction down to minus four and clarity at zero. Lowering the clarity does actually look really nice. There's a couple of film simulations out there where the clarity is minus two, minus three and I like that aesthetic. However, changing the clarity in the X100V slows it down and adds like a two second processing time after you've pressed the shutter. So I don't want to interfere with that and I just leave clarity at zero. Earlier on, I mentioned how using the film simulation Astia reduces contrast and makes everything look a little bit more soft. Combine that with a dynamic range of 400, you might be thinking that I just want to get rid of all contrast in my image, which obviously isn't true. If you follow me online and you've seen my photos, I like to get that harsh contrast between highlights and shadows. I think that's a really nice look, especially with street photography. And the way I achieve this harsh light and shadow contrast is by using single point focus with the focus point being really small in the center of my screen combined with the metering mode center weighted. When pointing my camera at a scene using aperture priority, I can quickly and easily find those compositions that expose the scene how I like. If I want the shadows and highlights to have a lot of contrast, I'll find something really bright in the image and expose for that. If I want the shadows to be bright and detailed, I'll point the camera into the shadows. Most of my settings are in automatic when shooting with the X100V. Aperture priority f4, f5.6, which means if I want to expose my highlights, I point my single point at the most exposed area, therefore blacking out the shadows. If I want the shadows to be in detail, I point my single point focus into the shadows and then everything will be exposed. And because of our high dynamic range, hopefully we don't clip the highlights. That's essentially how I expose my images. I fish around and find where I want my focus to be and where the exposure should be. And the camera does a great job at doing all of that automatically. I'm making it sound way more complicated when in reality, I just point and shoot when picking up the Fujifilm. Thanks so much for watching. Please hit subscribe. We're on the road to 100,000 subscribers. That would be much appreciated. And if you are using the X100V specifically, then a video has popped up here. 12 settings I think you should change when using the X100V to make it a better camera and a better experience in general. So check that out and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.